Good afternoon. My name is Gabrielle Stritch, and this is part two of Do You Really Want to Have a Mediator or Lawyer in Certain Situations? And we discussed this in the prior video, and I assured you co with complete prejudice, since I'm both a mediator, collaborative lawyer, and um, an attorney, that you absolutely do want to have one of those people by your side assisting you under these circumstances. What circumstances am I talking about? Well, the first one we talked about last time was a client expressed to me that they were friends underneath the whole relationship and that was a very positive thing and they wanted to stay friends. So what a better way to do that than to have the process guided by a mediator who's trained to keep things calm, keep the conversation constructive and formatted in a way that gets you to the end result in an amicable fashion. So yes, if you want, you were friends and you wanna stay friends, yes, you do need a mediator or potentially a collaborative lawyer, which also focuses on making the whole process work for everyone. The next question I raised was, you were together for 10 years, but only married for three. Simple, right? Well, not so simple. For example, did someone buy a house before even the 10 years started? Did someone buy a house before you got married, but when you were already together? Or was the house purchased just by one person at the beginning of your three-year portion of marriage? Well, the, this is a complicated issue under New Jersey family law. If you have the most recent example, you may be able to look at what was the value of the house when you got married? What is the value now? And if there's been an increase, then there's an argument that there should be a 50-50 split of the increase in value. But the other situations are even more complex. You want to ask the question, well, if it was during the 10 years, but before the three years, was it the house purchased in contemplation of marriage? Needless to say, under the new circumstances of a divorce, people might recall the circumstances quite differently. So you, again, this is an ideal situation for mediation where you can kind of talk it through and come up with something that both parties feel is fair. And then there are other situations like one of the parties had an affair. And in fact, that was the key reason they were splitting up. Is that going to impact the terms of the divorce? Well, a lot of times what I see is the affair person uh, feels guilty and is willing to give up things that perhaps they wouldn't give up in other circumstances. And the other person's angry and demanding more. Again, really ideal for working through in a mediation setting. So if your case has a few little quirks, like the ones I'm talking about, feel free to call me. My contact information is below, and we'll get you set up in the right situation and address all these complex issues. 